Just getting Mama boost to see. Hi everyone, this is my mum. Um, I had someone message me the other day and their son is going through TSW and the parents seem to be struggling with dealing and knowing what to do and they wanted a parent's perspective. Obviously I can't give them that because obviously I'm not a parent watching their child go through TSW but obviously my mum is. I've asked these parents the questions that they wanted me to ask and also we came up with some ourselves as well ourselves as well. Hi everyone, I just wanted to put a little disclaimer in the video that we are not doctors, we are just going by our own personal experience. Please go and see a doctor if you're worried about infection, if you're worried about your skin in general, whether that's weeping or anything, um, as you know everyone's different and everyone has different things with their skin. Um, just know that if you do go to the doctor you could have an unsupportive doctor but hopefully you can find someone that is supportive in that practice um, but if you can't I would try to find someone like a nurse or someone that you can talk to that does support it like I have because I luckily have a nutritionist that's also a qualified nurse and she checks over my skin for me if I'm ever worried about infection or anything like that so if you can find someone like that I highly suggest you try to find someone because it's very stressful and I myself get very panicky if I think I've got an infection especially at the beginning um, and that helped reassure me a lot and helped my mindset know that I was doing the right thing for me luckily I have I haven't had any infections through my TSW journey but that doesn't mean that you won't get one yourself or your child won't get one so if you are worried about that, please go and seek advice from a doctor um, because obviously we are not doctors. We are just saying our own personal experience of what we've done. So I hope you find someone like that. Back to the video. So what was your first impression of TSW? Um, I knew nothing about it whatsoever. You gave me a link um, that you picked up. So I looked at the, um, what it was about really, and looking at the stories and the photographs of people and what they've gone through was quite horrific. Looking at it, I thought, oh, well, it won't be that bad mm. because you've only used them very, very minute amounts in like small places on the body. So I thought these people must have used it all over their body to have that reaction. Or had like a higher steroid yeah, or, or had oral a, stero yeah, steroids or something. More of them because there's not really a lot of information out there because it's only recently the NHS have actually realised, well, acknowledged, I should say, that mm. this actually is a thing, a problem that is being caused by overuse of medication that's prescribed for a problem that really is minor compared to this problem now. Number two is, did you think I should go to the doctors? Well, initially, yes, you tend to think, well, your GP is the person you need to start with because we've always put our faith in the medical profession. But to be honest, after seeing what these drugs have actually done to people, my initial reaction then was, no, I really don't want to go back to them because this is the, it's caused from overuse of them anyway. Did the doctors ever mention anything about side effects? Because when I was originally prescribed steroids, I was about three or four, so I didn't really have much of a no. say in it. No. And they would say the same thing, and use it sparingly. But never actually were told, well, if you keep using this, it will cause an addiction towards this medication. Mm. I was never told that. Did they mention any other treatment other than steroids? No. Not really. We weren't offered anything. When you were quite young, you had what you call an allergy test. They put little things, markers on your back and they covered it with a plaster and you went back, I think, a week later to see if you had a reaction to certain things. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing. That's as far as we got. And there was nothing really um, flared up on you at the time. Um, so that was just it. Nothing came of anything from that either. How slash did, did you deal with the judgment from other people for not pushing me to go and see a doctor? Um, yeah, people do tend to say, oh gosh, that's so bad. Have you taken me to the doctor? What has the doctor said? But um, you were at an age where you were an adult 
Yeah, because so, I started this when I was 19, so mm. I technically have control over my own health. This decision was all down to you because mm -hmm. I could say, well, you'd ask me what my opinion was, but not knowing much about it no. and seeing how bad it was going to get, didn't imagine it would get as bad as some of the photographs I saw initially mm. because we hadn't overused them compared to some. I just trusted the fact that you were a very sensible individual and... If anybody could do it, you could, to be honest. I really do feel that. And I just had to think, well, I'm here to support you rather than criticise you because it's your, it's your body. Mm. But I did feel guilty because, obviously, I used to put them on you when you were younger. My generation, we never questioned what the doctor would prescribe. You take their word for that it was going to be doing you good. So maybe that you do tend to blame yourself. As a parent, you I know, would do but... anything to have it for you rather than you go through that to, mm. to watch it is just you just feel helpless because you can't do anything to help mm. because there's no there's nothing medication to help you with it mm. and the alternative is to go back on steroids and then you're just going to go back to square one again so the next one is are you angry with the doctors initially i probably was but i should be, i'm more angry with myself actually for not looking into it deeper at the time to try and find the reason behind why you have developed eczema in the first place. Mm. To me, that was my neglect. I put my trust in my GP that he knew everything, but they Obviously don't know didn't. everything. <laughs> they don't, they can't. But as a parent, you take your child to see a doctor so that you feel you've done what you can to help your child. Mm. But in this case, I feel more angry with myself for not getting more research and looking into it. So if I'm angry with myself mainly, you know, and partly with the doctors as well. They're constantly prescribing them to, to a three yeah. or four year old for over 15 years and that mm. didn't put up a red flag anywhere. That's like the doctor's neglect in a way because you're seeing how, you know, much you're using them and they're not referring you elsewhere or trying mm. other things or anything like that. So, you know, you can't just blame the doctors, but you can't just blame yourself either. And it's not the parents fault in my opinion you know everyone sees it a bit differently when it comes to my point of view when it comes to blame because i don't blame my parents but some people might but personally for me i don't what was the worst thing about watching your child go through tsw oh feeling so helpless to help because there's no medication to put this right because medication that's caused it in the first place going through the process of trying to help you um sleep to stop you scratching and each time you'd you literally I'd see you scratching your skin. I'd be, oh, please don't scratch it because you could hear you mm, tear on your skin. But you couldn't help it. And I used to hold your hands. I used to physically hold your hands and say, no, stop. That is difficult to watch. It really is. And the fact that you've lost so much sleep mm. um, because it keeps you awake at night. You don't get good sleep. No. Mm -hmm. I think for like the first like four or five months I literally survived on like a oh, half an hour yeah. to an hour sleep at night. I found I would be in my own room at the time worrying about how you were sleeping or how much you were scratching your yeah. skin. And even in your sleep you would scratch. I would know that so I wouldn't settle in my own room so I used to come into your room mm. and try and stop you doing that. Did you ever think about slash want me to go back on steroids? This can be at the beginning, now, yeah. well, whatever. at the beginning, we can, I can remember the first week you came off them. Mm -hmm. You said, you just came down one morning and said, Mum, I am not putting steroids on my skin any longer. But looking at it, I was thinking, oh gosh, well, you know, it's never going to be that bad. You know, I think I'll support what you want to do. That's I was fine a bit like here. that as well in the beginning. I was you like, know. it's not going to be that bad. No. It? Because I, I thought, well, I haven't applied that much because mm. um, we used it very sparingly. Like, it was like a tiny yeah. bit each time we applied it. But we did initially think after a week, oh, it's getting so much worse. We better, mm. do we put it on? And then I said, well, are we doing right? I'm not sure. It's up to you. It's your body. You mm. know, you've, you've got to make that decision as well. And you just tried a little bit under your chin, didn't you? Yeah, and it literally just burned like hell and I literally took it off yes, straight away. Yeah, it's like acid on your skin. Yeah, almost. so I, I find you're even more sensitive after you've mm. stopped it and then you reapply it. It yeah. can make it even worse. Like some people anyway. Do you deal with depression watching your child go through a TSW illness and do you ever break down? Well, I'm, <laughs> I try not to show my feelings because yeah. to me I've got to stay strong for you because I know if I start crying, it's really bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your dad, 
Yeah, my dad he, is awful. He used to look at you and he, he'd like say, no, stop. I'd say, no, don't you dare cry in front of her. It was especially when I had it on my face. Mm. Like, every time he saw my face, he'd cry. And then that would yeah. make me cry because I'd, I'd upset him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but it's, um, it's just how he is. He, I know, he's, he's very sensitive. sensitive guy. Um, myself, it's not that I'm a cold person. No. It's just that I, I can hold it together better. But... Yeah, you do get so upset, and I tend to do my crying when I'm on my own. I'll go and I like to have a nice bath every evening. I have 20 minutes to half an hour to myself, and yes, I think it was through frustration mm. um, as well. I would cry because you've got to let it out because emotionally you can't keep bottling it all up because that's not good for you, it's not good for your health. Did you find watching TSW videos helpful and to see what other people mm. were going through? I did to a point. I wanted to get the knowledge, and it's the same old story. How long is all the questions we want to ask? The first one is how long is this going to take? I want an actual date when yeah, I'm through the better. other side. It's all going to be better, and we're mm. going to be done. You're There's never going to get a date. <laughs> You're never going to get a, a date at all. And it's like with any addiction, because what it is, the body is addicted to this medication. If you think you can just, oh, I'm having a really bad day, just apply a little bit of steroid cream, it'll be fine. And it won't. Mm. It'll put you back to the, the beginning ag again. And then you're going to be further to walk forward again, aren't you? Um, but it's, it's one of those, you're in the tunnel, and we don't know how long the tunnel is. And you get to the other side, you see this little bit of light, and you think, oh, we're nearly there, look, the skin's looking good, and then, bang, wake up one morning, right it's again. flared again. For no apparent reason, it's just how the body is just naturally throwing it out, in layers, I suppose. Mm. It's the only way I can describe it. Do you wish there was a parent support group on TSW? Yeah, yeah that would um, be good. I looked earlier, and there's not a support group for parents looking after children mm. or their child going through TSW. I think group. sometimes it's, it's always the same. If you know somebody else is going on this journey with you together, you don't feel quite so isolated. Um, it's the fact that there's not a lot of knowledge out there mm -hmm. and um, the fact that sometimes you just want to talk to somebody for somebody else to give their opinion, even if you mm -hmm. don't take their opinion on board. Um, it's the fact you've got another view on something. What is slash was my worst triggers in your opinion? Like what do um, you find triggers my body the most? Stress is the number one, I think. In your opinion, mm. what was my worst point or like worst days? Um, the first Christmas, just before Christmas, we were at a point where I think you started it in the August. This was coming up September. It flared unbelievably because mm -hmm. you had a lot of stress at the time. Then it was, I'd say, a week before Christmas, mm -hmm. and we were going into, a, we were in a lockdown, so yeah. we couldn't go out. You weren't seeing a GP anyway. Mm -hmm. If you rang the doctor, it would be a telephone conversation. Um, so that was that was a no go anyway. Um, we didn't even bother ringing the doctor. But my main concern was when it was getting to a point where it was weeping so much that I was, I had the fear it was going to get infected. And then we're in, into a bigger issue then yeah. because you don't want to get a blood infection at all. So I can remember we got to a point, I said, no, come on, do you want me to take you to the doctors? Do you need the doctor? You know, what do you think? Because it's your body. And you said, no, no, no. But you were quite tearful, not knowing what to do because it was really bad. Because like, you're supposed to go to the doctor when you have a problem with your health. Mm. But when the problem is caused by the doctor, who do you go to? Yeah, so like, we then yeah. rang Tracy. She was on, she literally replied instantly and said, mm -hmm. right, come on, what, what are we dealing with? And we had, you had a conversation with her, mm -hmm. didn't you? Well, we both did um, mm -hmm. over the phone. And um, you sent a few photographs to her. And she said, right, well, okay, we have to make sure you keep it clean. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want any infection. Because on websites as well, like I was looking on the NH web, NH, NH, NHS. And it, yeah, <laughs> website and um, every this was before it was recognised and it was coming up that if your skin is weeping then it's infected. That's not true. Like if it's weeping, it's not infected. It's just a bigger problem. Yeah, than you know, normal. an infection would cause a smell. Yeah, it would be be more of a yellowy like a pussy type thing. Mm. I would imagine. So everything that I was reading was stressing me out more. Yeah. Um, so 
because she's a nurse, I sent some pictures over and she was like, no, it's not infected, it's fine. Mm. So that kind of brought mm. my worries down yeah, a bit. Yeah, your stress level um, came down then. So if you can find someone like that, someone that's, you know, qualified in either nutrition, being a nurse, someone mm. that recognises TSW as yeah. a thing as well, because she does. Um, but then, saying that, doctors are recognising it now. They, so, they are recognising you know. it, but there's a lot of places that don't. How did you sort out schooling when it comes to illness? So obviously mm. I wasn't in school no. when this was happening, but when I was 13, yeah. I was taken out of school because I was diagnosed with a different thing by mm. the doctor, which is also caused by a leaky gut. Yes. So, mm. you know, I've got a gut health issue, obviously. But yeah, so it, we're not going through this the same as everyone else that's asking about schooling, but my mum did sort out my schooling yeah, when we... I was 13. We did, um, we had a, a chat to the school to say that the, at the time, it, it we, you weren't able to manage to get into school. If no. you did manage to get into school, it was only for a few hours. It, you know, um, it just didn't work. So we were lucky enough then that we, we had a few weeks, the school supported you with homeschooling. Mm. Um, only a couple of hours a week though, so it wasn't anywhere near what you should have had. No. Um, eventually we went down the road, I took my daughter out of school and we homeschooled her. But that's a different thing it's altogether. It's a different But illness. I should imagine if your child has got this really bad, itchy, weeping skin and you're going to be mixing with more people, you've got more chance of infection, I would imagine. Mm. I, oh, I don't think I would really want you to go to school mm. until you've healed better. I think you've got to weigh up your child's care really at the end of the day is how they manage to deal with school with dealing with this as well yeah and you've got to sit them down and really have a conversation about that yeah you'd have to have a, a letter from your doctor definitely yeah. to give to the school mm -hmm. to recommend that you know maybe for a few months while it's bad you can you know homeschool for a bit your child could be getting more stressed by going into school and I mean, if it was possible through through lockdown and they made arrangements mm. for lockdown, I don't think it would be as hard as to hard do to do now. Um, things are in place. Things are in place. Mm. Like you've got Canvas and yeah. other place, other online things. I'm sure they can work something out. Mm. Obviously, depending on the school, but you know, that's a, yeah, that's a tough one because I haven't been through that myself. No. Um, but obviously. You been need through to, it, you but need to talk through something to school, different, really. Yeah, um, have that conversation because you've just got to do the best for your child and their mm. health. Did you notice if I flared from food or drinks? Um, yes, you, you would definitely flare from certain foods, but we've known that for a while. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any improvement with what I look like? Oh, definitely. The um, last um, few months, there is question. improvement, and because there is improvement. Obviously, mentally, you are feeling a lot lighter about things and you are happier in yourself. Mm. I'm just hoping before long she would be going back to doing her singing. How did it affect the household? Um, well, quite dramatically to start with because initially we were all saying, oh my gosh, what should we do? How can we help? Your natural reaction is, come on, you better go to the doctor and then we can see the other side while looking at everything else with the information is being caused through having stuff. So if you go to the doctor, he's gonna give you the same stuff. It does affect the whole household because you just wanna naturally help and you just don't wanna see anybody suffering. So it's, it's quite upsetting to watch. So now 18 months on from when I first mm. stopped, do you yeah. think it was the right thing to do me stopping steroids? Yes, definitely, because at some time in your life, this would have eventually happened. So yeah. to deal with it sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. it's got to be a good thing. It's changed my total um, look on what you actually put in your body and what you put on your body. Read everything because we don't know what's in it, do we? Let's be fair. A lot of it, you just go and you just trust somebody's told you that is good for you. Mm. Is it? We should start questioning things more, I think. You know, we don't really see it from our carer's view or our parents' mm. view and, you know, they're going through it as well. So I kind of wanted to do this video to show their side of it and how they see everything that we go through. And obviously 
everyone's view and everyone's parent will probably see this completely different to mine even. Mm. I think my mum is very supportive, so is my dad, but my dad's um, a little bit more sensitive and he makes me cry a little bit more because he cries when he sees me sometimes. He cares just as much, it's just he's mm. not in this video. So I'm gonna mm. leave this video here. Please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, any questions, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>